It's Sunday, March 2nd, 2025, and I've got an update for you on our next big storm. We've got a major storm about to cross the entire United States, uh, bringing about everything at once, from snow, blizzard conditions, uh, to flash flooding, to severe weather, tornadoes, hail, damaging winds, you name it, uh, it's coming for tens of millions of us across the United States. Let's get into the details. I think the most intense thing that we're going to be dealing with uh, with this storm system is going to be the severe weather in the deep south. South and Arkansas, Louisiana, and uh, Mississippi, which is very well highlighted here by the Storm Prediction Center. We've got a day three enhanced risk down there. Slight risk goes all the way up into Missouri now, but this is certainly not going to be the most impactful thing. There's going to be aspects of the storm that affect much more people and cause widespread power outages and stuff like that that I want to cover before we get deep into this, because obviously this is going to become our main area of focus uh, before too long. Let's just real quick go over the broad forecast for everybody in the United States for this whole storm system and then we'll kind of zoom into the details. First of all today there's going to be some storms in Oklahoma and Texas. We'll talk about those here in a minute and then you can see the warm air and then you can see the warm air really kind of uh, you know propagating over the central and uh, more eastern portions of the United States out in front of this big trough over here that's going to bring some snow into Idaho, Utah, California and those places today. Uh, that's going to continue to move off to the east. That cold air is going going to meet up with the massive amounts of warm, moist air from the Gulf over here in the uh, plains. And then on Tuesday, we are going to see a rapid expansion of precipitation and uh, a very quickly deepening cyclone here in the middle of the United States, uh, potentially reaching near record levels for March. This is going to be a very powerful storm as far as the strength of the actual cyclone. Okay. Um, so the the fact that we might see a sub 988 millibar low pressure center here makes all aspects of this storm more uh, potentially impactful for everybody. Not only the severe weather that we're going to see down here, but also look at this backside snow. This is going to be a really impactful storm from Colorado all the way up through Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan. Maybe one of the more impactful storms of the year. Not because you're going to get buried in feet of snow, but this is going to be a blizzard because the cyclone is so deep here. We are going to see surface winds, uh, especially over here in the front range over towards the western uh, plains, 60 to 80 miles per hour. Uh, and then even farther north, we're, we're going to see 30 to 50 mile per hour gusts. So this is going to be a full on blizzard for some people in Colorado, maybe up into Nebraska as well. And it'll be intermittently a blizzard even in uh, Iowa and Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, UP of Michigan. So get ready for a very intense storm here, especially as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday all the way up into the Northern Plains uh, and the Great Lakes region. And the closer you get to this low pressure center, the more likely it is that you experience some of those strong winds, even on the rainy side. Now, it's not going to be quite as intense as on the backside, but we're going to see some uh, strong winds in Illinois and Indiana, maybe into Ohio as well as we get some heavy rains on the, as we go into Wednesday. The snow is going to move up into Ontario and Quebec. And then we are going to see the storms and all of the rain move over towards the East Coast. If you're north of this line, it's just going to be generally windy, rainy conditions, nothing crazy. Uh, if you're south of the line, however, uh, this is going to be potentially some severe weather that we have to deal with over here. And then something else that's going on is behind the storm system, we are going to have very cold temperatures. We are actually going, going to experience another minor Arctic blast for some people, especially the farther north you go behind this storm. But for the, the rest of us, it's just going to send us back below average for a period of time before our next big ridge comes in. So once again, here's some key messages for the big time spring storm up here as far as snow and wind goes. Uh, maximum wind gusts through March 3rd. Look at this. We see the vast majority of everybody in the central U.S. here receiving at least 30 mile per hour wind gusts. So this is going to cause widespread power outages and it's going to be problematic to say the least. And then the greatest chance for blizzard conditions is going to be right there from Nebraska back into Colorado where I'm almost certain we're going to have widespread blizzard warnings.
warnings in effect as we get into the height of this storm. And once again, I don't think anybody's going to get buried with snow here. There's going to be some places that experience a blizzard in Nebraska that end up with a less than an inch of snow. Uh, it's just going to be coming down hard for a period of time, and then it's going to be blowing and drifting, and, and the, the winds are going to be the main thing here. But there are some places in Iowa that could see over three inches of snow, especially around Fort Dodge, points north and east. Southeast Minnesota, northern portions of Wisconsin, we could see several areas getting over six inches of snow. I think that the UP of Michigan might be the real winners here, with some places certainly getting over a foot of snow. And then once again, I want to draw your attention to the winds where they are going to get really intense, especially on Tuesday, uh, right on the front range here. There's going to be several areas that have hurricane force wind gusts. Um, this is going to cause a lot of problems. Obviously, it's going to be blizzard conditions up here, but down farther to the south, the winds are still going to be there and they're going to be really dry and they're not going to be accompanied by snow. So what does that mean? Well, it means that Monday into Tuesday, we are going to have ourselves an extremely critical fire weather situation from New Mexico into Texas. I think that uh, even areas a little bit farther east from this uh, are going to be impacted uh, as we go into the day on Tuesday. So get ready on March 3rd and 4th out here for some widespread, rapidly moving wildfires. It's going to be a, a really serious situation as all of that dry air comes in uh, and races across some very dry vegetation out here. And then on the other side of the low pressure center, we've got very strong winds coming from the other direction, right from the Gulf, and that's carrying so much moisture with it that we actually have an excessive rainfall outlook covering a lot of the central U.S. down into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. The Mississippi River between southwest Kentucky down into northern portions of Louisiana. Uh, I'm concerned about flooding down here. We still have a lot of uh, rivers uh, overflowing their banks or near flood stage and a lot of those tributaries are just going to back up as it goes into the main river and that could cause flooding. So it's nothing major but definitely if you live in a flood prone area around Memphis, Little Rock, over towards Birmingham and then even farther north up into north northern Missouri, southern portions of Iowa. Make sure you are keeping an eye on those uh, rivers, creeks, and streams. And then all of this is going to continue to move east, and it is eventually going to get out of our hair. It's going to go over the Atlantic Ocean, and we won't have to worry about it anymore. But right before it does that, there's going to be enough Atlantic moisture in play here to maybe re-spark some uh, storm concerns on the east coast from southern New Jersey all the way down into uh, southeast Georgia. Looks like more of a damaging wind threat here, but they're definitely uh, could be a couple tornadoes. It's too far out to talk about specifics here, but just know the day four outlook has about 20 million people under the gun for potential severe weather. And all of this is going to start today with a tiny little slight risk of severe weather over here in Oklahoma and Texas. This is driven by a little, tiny, tiny, tiny little 5% probability of seeing a tornado or two. There is going to be a very, very limited window here uh, right when these storms first start popping up today uh, where there's going to be some decent parameters in place for an isolated tornado. I think the main threat is going to be hail, but uh, you could definitely see a tornado today near Elk City, down towards Altus, maybe even as far south and east as Lawton. Um, so, you know, definitely pay attention to warnings and stuff, but this is not going to be a big outbreak or anything. If anything, this is going to be a good day for storm chasers to get out there and maybe get a, a photogenic uh, picture of a tornado. Uh, here's something that we might take a closer look at this spring whenever we're analyzing severe weather setups. This is a, a forecast sounding. Um, it kind of gives us a picture of everything that's going on in the atmosphere. If you're new to this, if you don't know what this is, just to kind of give you the gist of what a storm chaser is looking for here, notice the hodograph here. You see the big looping shape. That insinuates that there is a lot of wind shear uh, in the atmosphere. You can also see that over here on the wind barbs. You see how they're pointing in different directions as you go up. That indicates that the winds are turning with height uh, as you go higher up in the atmosphere. And then also you can see that this dashed line right here, there's a gap between it and the red line. Uh, that just indicates our instability or our cape. So there's a decent amount of instability out here, uh, but notice how much of it is pretty high up. There's not a lot of low level instability. Uh, and in fact, if you pay really close attention, you can see how the red line kind of bulges out to the right a little bit here and closer to the surface. That's known as a cap. So that actually might keep storms from forming or it might keep a lid on the atmosphere 
atmosphere just long enough for the instability to grow enough to where if it does uh, erode, if that uh, warm layer in the atmosphere kind of backs off a little bit, then it will allow for a more explosive updraft whenever the storms do start. So definitely a day where there's going to be a lot of storm chasers over there, I think, trying to get that uh, isolated supercell photogenic uh, tornado photo. And then those storms are going to continue into Monday, and that's going to bring about uh, another chance of damaging winds, maybe from Wichita Falls up through Oklahoma City and Tulsa. And then once again, the main thing, the main event uh, where we actually do have a decent chance of some strong tornadoes uh, is going to be on Tuesday. Whenever the storm system is really pulling in that Gulf moisture, it's going to be some decent wind shear down here. And it does look like there's going to be at least a couple of strong tornadoes on Tuesday. Uh, right now, it looks like we might be live on that day. So make sure you have notifications on and all that good stuff. And of course, we're going to have a lot more data tomorrow for this system. We're going to be able to show you the simulated radar and do forecast soundings and stuff. So we're going to have another video tomorrow that will be more dedicated to this. Also the, the day uh, three for uh, the East Coast. Um, so if you want more details on this, make sure you tune in tomorrow for that. In the meantime, don't be scared and be prepared. Know what you're going to do whenever that uh, warning comes through. Go ahead and go over your tornado action plan with your family and your friends or whoever you're going to be with on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get through this one. I, once again, I'm not 100% certain that we're going to go live on Tuesday, but there's a decent chance that we'll, we will be live either Tuesday or Wednesday or both. Uh, so turn those notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Uh -huh.